Skinheads from all over take part in a protest against racism. A Twin Cities fireman does his part to reduce the number of kids killed in fires. And the sports stars come out for breakfast while the fans feast. I'm Cindy Hilcher. And I'm Mike Walcher. The Weekend Report is coming up next. Monday only. One day super Chevy sale at your Heartland Chevy dealers. Monday, January 16th. Every Chevrolet car, truck, and van will be marked with special one day prices. And for qualified buyers, zero down payment on every new Chevrolet car, truck, or van in stock. One day discounts in effect for 12 hours only. This one day super Chevy sale absolutely ends Monday. So bring your title or payment book. All factory cash incentives will apply during this one day super Chevy sale. Hurry for this once in a lifetime opportunity at the Heartland Chevy dealer in your hometown. If you love lots of shrimp, try Red Lobster Shrimp Spectacular Platter, just $7.95. Four kinds of shrimp, all on one plate, including our delicious new grilled shrimp. That's our Shrimp Spectacular Platter, just $7.95, now at Red Lobster. Shop Champion Auto Stores now during the Keep It Running sale. You'll find everything you need to keep your car or truck in shape on sale. So keep it running with Champion Auto Stores Keep It Running sale. He preached redemption from the pulpit, but some people say he was preying on women. I guess every muscle in my body must have froze because he began to touch me. Now the church is split over charges of seduction. I am not accountable to a board. I am not accountable to a man. My accountability is to God. An Inside Edition exclusive, Monday on Channel 4. WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. It was billed as the Breakfast of Champions. It brought together two of the area's top sportscasters and dozens of sports celebrities. It's one of the stories we'll cover next on The Weekend Report. WCCO Television presents Mike Walsher, Cindy Hilger, Mike Fairborn, and Ralph John Fritz. This is The Weekend Report. Good evening. 60 years ago today, Martin Luther King Jr. was born, a man who dedicated his life to try to wipe out the barrier between races. But many people would question just how far we have come since Martin Luther King began his crusade. Today, a group often accused of racism teamed up with some University of Minnesota students to try to stamp it out. Nearly 100 protesters gathered on campus and then went on a march to cover up racist sentiments, literally. Daryl Savage explains. At first glance, this looked like any other on-campus rally, but the purpose reached off-campus to what these protesters call a problem that's getting out of control. Racism on the rise, and we have to fight it now before it's too late. The marchers consisted of people of various races and ages, but their voices were unified. The time has come to wipe out racist scum! First stop, a university building that the protesters say was named after a Nazi sympathizer, and then a march across the Washington Avenue Bridge. These organizers say it's fitting for this protest to start here at the U because of what they call a recent influx of racist graffiti right here on campus. Watching it all, university police. The target was two overpasses above nearby Cedar Avenue where racist graffiti was spray painted. The goal was to cross out the old messages and leave new ones. This was more than one city's battle. Many of the skinheads taking part have come to town from other parts of the Midwest with a purpose. Stamp out racism, to try to stop all the Nazi scum that's trying to use our name as skinheads and promote their racism, and I came up to support it. Unity, standing behind each other, backing each other, and being there for each other, that's the most important thing. The chanting and marching lasted two hours. The U of M law student who organized the event liked what he saw. I'm just overjoyed today. And those young people illustrated uh, that, that white people have to be as vehemently against racism as blacks have been. It's no coincidence this march is on the weekend of Martin Luther King's holiday. These protesters say this peaceful march against racism would make the late civil rights leader proud. Daryl Savage, WCCO Television News, Minneapolis. Last month, when a group of university students spray-painted over racist graffiti on the campus, three people were arrested. There were no arrests today. While they were rallying against racism at the university campus, a Minneapolis neighborhood was remembering the man who helped get it all started. Dr. King's birthday observance is tomorrow, and today the Elliott Park neighborhood held its seventh annual celebration, A Dream to Build On. 
it uh, brings out different things about Martin Luther King, and in my eyes, he was great, and I liked him. We might as well let it live on. Nothing never dies. Today's celebration included a musical tribute to Dr. King and a free soul food dinner. A two-car accident near Mille Lacs Lake injured six people this morning. The collision occurred on Highway 169 just south of Vineland. One car reportedly sideswiped the other. Two of the victims were treated and released while a 29-year-old man and a 30-year-old woman are in serious but stable condition in an Onamia hospital. An elderly couple from Grand Rapids is also hospitalized. Both of those victims are in good condition. A little boy taken to the hospital after a hit-and-run accident last night has been treated and released. The accident happened at the corner of 24th Street and Nicollet Avenue in Minneapolis. Police have not arrested anyone in that hit-and-run. Witnesses say a green car hit the boy. The family of hit-and-run victim Lanny LaPlante got some financial support today. Team Media, a celebrity hockey team, played a benefit game to help out the LaPlante family. The game was played at Columbia Arena in Fridley and featured several media members and former professional hockey players. Columbia Heights Police still investigating the accident that killed Lanny LaPlante. A 33-year-old man who made a comment about a bomb on a Northwest flight has been released without being charged. Mark Stinotan of Columbia Heights apparently made a joke about a bomb being on board a flight headed for Minneapolis from Philadelphia. Officials delayed the flight 35 minutes. They checked the plane. No bomb was found. Stinotan was kept behind by authorities. He took a later flight out of Philadelphia. It was a sports fan's dream at the Beerman Building today. Stars from all over the sporting world getting together to have breakfast. That story when the weekend report continues. At 6.15 in the morning, we have worked. The other guys do a pretty good chicken impression. But in fact, their chicken is often chopped, pressed, even rearranged. At Hardy's, our chicken is real chicken. Our chicken sandwich starts with whole chicken breast. That's because we never forget, you can always go someplace else. So come into Hardy's while the other guys try to figure out just what real chicken is. Hello, doggy. Now enjoy our chicken filet sandwich, choice of large fries or a side salad for only $2.49 at Hardy's. Levitt's January sale and clearance. It's a fabulous sale. Bargains in every department. Low, low prices. Huge selection. In stock, ready to go. For example, only $499 buys your choice of this queen-size foam cushioned sleeper sofa or this queen-size sleeper sofa with inner spring bed for two. And that's just one of hundreds of bargains. On sale now at Levitt's. We're overstocked at Sun Valley Waterbeds, and that means sale. A sale designed to do one thing, clear everything out. So you'll save up to 50% on kids' waterbeds, black lacquer beds, flotation waterbeds, bedroom furniture, sheets, and comforters, with nothing down and no payments till April. It's all priced to sell, and it's all priced to move, this weekend only. So hurry, before we clear everything out, and there's nothing left. Over the past two months, 16 Minnesota children have died in house fires, including two last weekend and eight the Sunday before that in Reamer. Last fall, the St. Paul Fire Department began a pilot program in the city schools aimed at third graders, teaching them about fire safety. The classes include homework assignments, and they were created by a veteran firefighter the kids call Fireman Frank. Caroline Lowe reports. Just days after fire killed two children and their mother on St. Paul's Central Avenue, firefighter Frank Caruso teaches Morning. kids in another part of the city what they should do if their home goes up in flames. What I would really like, I would like all the fires to stop. I would like it if you could put me out of business. Using graphic pictures and straight talk, Fireman Frank tells these third graders they need to practice two escape plans with their parents. Practice with them, crawl low with them, teach them how to touch the doors, make sure the doors are not hot, um, remind them that everything in that house can be replaced except for the people. It's primary that the people get out. And once they're out, the kids should call 911 from a neighbor's house and then go to a prearranged meeting place near their home. When the fire department gets there, you can't say, well, Joe isn't there. He, I don't know where he is. And a firefighter is going to go inside and look for you 
and you may be already out of the house, but you're in the backyard playing with the dog. Frank also says it's a good idea to keep a whistle near the children's beds in case they can't get out and need to be rescued. You want to blow this whistle so loud, everybody in the neighborhood is going to wake up. You have no other way. You're already awake. You're on the second floor of your house, and you can't get out. You go to that window. You open up the window. Real, real, real loud. The firefighter warns the kids to never jump from a window beyond the first floor of their house and to only break one out as a last resort. Finally, he says to make sure they have working smoke detectors and to buy new batteries once a year. And to help prevent fires, he talks about the dangerous things to watch for around their house and to never play with matches or cigarette lighters. There is no good reason for playing with matches and lighters. There aren't any. Matches and lighters are dangerous. They kill people. Frank Caruso thinks of the recent rash of fires every time he goes into a classroom. He hopes that by reaching the children, they will then teach their parents to take whatever steps they need to prevent a tragedy in their home. Caroline Lowe, WCCO Television News, St. Paul. Caruso teaches classes throughout the city. If you are interested in having him speak to your group, you can call him at 228-6248. Well, it may be a bit early for you to start thinking about it, but organizers are already busy making plans for this year's state fair. Organizers are optimistic about the fair in light of booming attendance in recent years. This weekend's meeting with county fair representatives served as a chance to share ideas and concerns. We share problems, and we can kind of uh, exchange information that's beneficial to both. I've never, I've never missed the opportunity to visit Minnesota County Fairs because I think there are things I can learn about presentation at the State Fair from any of those county fairs. This year's State Fair begins on August 24th. The University of Minnesota will begin interviewing prospective regents this coming week. The panel screening the candidates already has about 30 to choose from to fill four openings. It will get another list of names in the next few days. The panel plans to recommend four candidates for each of the seats representing districts and eight for each of the at-large seats. A joint session of the legislature will then make the final selections. Sports fans of all ages had a field day today at the University of Minnesota. The Breakfast of Champions kicked off a new family relationship for WCCO and sports fans everywhere. Where are you from? Minneapolis. Fathers and sons of all ages were on hand to celebrate a new kinship between two of the Twin Cities' favorite sports pontificators. Well, I just uh, want to introduce him to something that I really enjoy being a part of. Mark Rosen, Sid Hartman, and Dave Mona hosted the Breakfast of Champions, which included football players, professional wrestlers, and baseball all-stars. More than 3,000 people showed up for autographs, games, and some fun. It exceeded uh, every expectation, and what is nice is that there are the families, and it's a wonderful celebration, and uh, I think that people are having a great time. This is a fantastic event where you bring all the personalities and the stars and you can fill up that whole football uh, complex. You'd like to see the Vikings run the ball more. The new sports relationship wasn't the most important feature of the event. All the proceeds were donated to the bone marrow transplant fund at the University of Minnesota. However, the relationship is still something special. It's been great. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I've admired this guy for many years, and uh, he don't really tell people his real age. He's a little older than uh, they say. It's sort of been like an out-of-body experience, quite frankly, just working with Sid Hartman and being here for the first day and uh, just looking over and saying, is this really happening? It is. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a ball. Actually, they kind of look like father and son a little bit, don't you think? <laughs> We never heard from Mark on that one, though, did we? Mm, <laughs> well, now you can hear the debut of Sid Hartman and Mark Rosen's radio show tomorrow morning at 8.30 on WCCO. And just what kind of morning should we expect? Well, Tom Mahoney will be here next to tell us how long the spring live weather will last. A smile can light the darkness. A helping hand can show the way. It's the little things that matter most day to day. When you take the time to share, it can mean so much to someone out there. A friendly look, a smile, a touch, just knowing you can.
All this week on Live, join us with our guest stars, Jane Fonda and the hottest young uh, singer on the charts today, Miss Debbie Gibson, will be here. Also, the husband and wife comedy team of Jerry Stiller and Ann Mira, actress Shirley Hemphill from What's Happening Now. And we'll have, uh, from the political uh, side of things, comedian Jim Morris and Fred Travellina doing their political impressions, some great delicious recipes from our kitchen, and the love chef will be here, too. And Kathy Lee returns Monday at 9 on Channel 4. You took your husband for everything. No, I, I didn't take him for everything. And neither I did took I. Him for my fair share. On the next Sally Jesse Raphael, divorce. Can wives win? This is very cold and calculated. This isn't the way the normal divorce goes. You're right. Normally, the wife gets shafted. This is going to be <laughs> hardcore <coughs> guerrilla warfare. Winning wives, losing husbands. On the next Sally. Monday at 3 on Channel 4. If you're fascinated by it, it's on Donahue. You can put that inside your mama form, Phil. That's the container that your body is placed in that's identical to the way you look right now. And suddenly, I became overwhelmed with the fact that I wanted to handle this myself. So you sort of parted with the body then at the entrance to the crematorium? Correct. The latest trends in funerals. Next, Donahue. Monday at 8 on Channel 4. Mr. Hockey, you do get the chance to chat. They're down to the final leg of the John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon that's being held along Lake Superior's North Shore. So far, Dee Dee John Rowe of Alaska is holding on to the lead as her team heads for the final checkpoint. The race goes from Duluth to Grand Portage and then back to Duluth. John Rowe left the Two Harbors checkpoint about 1.25 this afternoon after taking her mandatory four-hour layover. The race began with 25 mushers and there are just 10 remaining right now. If John Rowe holds on to her lead, she'll come into Duluth at around 8 o'clock tonight. Man, they've had some pretty warm weather for uh, that event. Yeah. Oh, they really have. It's yeah. been mild. The temperature's going above normal. And today, we were a little bit warmer than what I really even thought we would get to. Yeah. So, in fact, right now, our temperature is still holding up in the 30s. It is at 31 degrees, humidity 61%, westerly winds at 15, dew point is 19, and our barometric pressure is holding steady at 29.97. Elsewhere around the state now, St. Cloud has warmed up to 24 degrees. I say warmed up. They were in the lower 20s earlier today. And then along that race uh, from Duluth going back, temperatures are generally in the teens, but it could be down in the single digits. We are in the single digits up around International Falls and also out around Fargo, and it is still above the freezing mark in the southern part of the state state around uh, Fairmont and over as we move towards the western part of Wisconsin temperatures there are in the upper 20s to the lower part of the 30s now our daytime high for today did make it up to 33 degrees our overnight low was 18 normally 19 would be the high and to the low so you can see well above normal but still no record as a record high 42 degrees that was back in 1942 no precipitation sunrise was at 748 set this evening just before we began the newscast about a half an hour before so at 4.58. Now this is what is called a visible satellite imagery, where you can see the snow on the ground. That does not move at all. Likewise, over here in Iowa, that isn't moving at all. But there is this upper air disturbance that is moving right on across the state, causing a couple of snow flurry activity uh, up around the Duluth area and up towards the Hibbing vicinity. Uh, let's move from our satellite picture to our current weather map. Now, what is causing that is this front that had gone through and then, like I say, a weak upper air disturbance. Now, this front will move on towards the east. We'll be in a warm sector of air for tomorrow, then a little bit cooler on Tuesday, and back to warmer weather again as we move into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Temperatures for tomorrow, well, they'll be warming up into the lower part of the 30s throughout much of the area. In the northwestern part of Minnesota, temperatures for the most part will be in the lower part of the 20s. Well, as far as our... Uh, 30-day uh, outlook goes. Now, uh, this is, uh, when I look at these, I like to say they're fun. They are not to be taken literally because uh, quite often you can't really say what will happen in the next 30 days. Well, in the southeast part of Minnesota, supposedly we should have above normal temperatures. Of course, that's going on right now. As far as precipitation, well, there will be above normal in the eastern part of the state, whereas the western part of the state out in the Dakotas all the way towards the Rocky Mountains will stay right around normal. But like I say, those are not to be taken literally. They're just there for the fun of it. Well, let's check out our specific 
forecast and partly cloudy skies, a few flurries tonight. This is to be taken literally and not for the fun of it. A few flurries in the far north, low temperature around 15 west to southwest winds. Ahead for tomorrow, partly cloudy skies, warmer than normal with a daytime high around 28. Southwest winds a little bit gusty, 10 to 20 miles per hour. For tomorrow night, decreasing cloudiness, a low of 18. There still could be a couple of flurries around on Monday night. And then for Tuesday, partly cloudy skies, a few flurries with daytime highs very close to 30 degrees. Now our extended outlook, partly cloudy Wednesday through Friday with a daytime high on Wednesday about 28, 30 on Thursday, and 29 on Friday. So, uh, Cindy and Mike, those 30-day outlooks, they're fun to look at, <laughs> but uh, don't go to the bank on them. All right, all right. Thank you very much, Tom. Right. Some Vikings have an honor that many players just dream about. A spot on the coveted all-Madden team. Tom Hanneman will have the sports coming up next. Man for man. One of the best in the league. The other guys do a pretty good chicken impression. But in fact, their chicken is often chopped, pressed, even rearranged. At Hardee's, our chicken is real chicken. Our chicken sandwich starts with whole chicken breast. That's because we never forget, you can always go someplace else. So come into Hardee's while the other guys try to figure out just what real chicken is. Hello, doggy. Now enjoy our chicken filet sandwich, choice of large fries or a side salad for only $2.49 at Hardee's. One day only, one day Super Chevy Sale at your Heartland Chevy Dealers. Monday, January 16th, every Chevrolet car, truck, and van will be marked with special one-day prices. And for qualified buyers, zero down payment on every new Chevrolet car, truck, or van in stock. One-day discounts in effect for 12 hours only. This one-day Super Chevy Sale absolutely ends Monday. So bring your title or payment book. All factory cash incentives will apply during this one-day Super Chevy Sale. Hurry for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity at the Heartland Chevy Dealer in your hometown. We're overstocked at Sun Valley Waterbeds, and that means sale. A sale designed to do one thing, clear everything out. So you'll save up to 50% on kids' waterbeds, black lacquer beds, flotation waterbeds, bedroom furniture, sheets, and comforters, with nothing down and no payments till April. It's all priced to sell, and it's all priced to move, this weekend only. So hurry, before we clear everything out, and there's nothing left. Monday on the 5 p.m. report, how you and your baby can get a good night's sleep. Dr. Margie Hogan shows us what you can do to help your child from having nightmares on a special for your child report. Also coming up Monday at 5, Sylvia Gambardella with tax tips. Help Center 4 operators will answer your phone-in questions live on how to tackle those tough new 1040s. Plus, we'll find out how Twin City residents celebrated the birthday of the late Dr. Martin Luther King. Monday on the 5 p.m. Report, Channel 4. Okay, we're uh, in between Super Bowl. Still waiting for another week to go by, but uh, the Vikings, their season's over, and they got some honors today. They did. We'll talk about that. What are we going to see in the next week? We're going to see guys getting off buses and on buses. It started today, today the uh, hype for Super Bowl 23, but despite the fact that the season is over for Viking fans, uh, those fans could take some consolation with the news today that Five Vikings have been named to the all-Madden team. Okay, maybe it's not much consolation, but this is a slow day, and we didn't have much else to lead with. So here we go. On offense, John picked Kirk Loudermilk as his center, a guy Madden says that looks so nice with his family, but becomes an animal when he's on the field. Next up at wide receiver, A.C. gets the nod. We can't take a hit. Oh, yeah? Baloney, watch this. You run it inside, whap, he'll take it and hold on to it. Outside, whap, he'll take it out there. And then he'll even give some back after he takes it. And you say, okay, the guy's a tough guy. Does he have any moves or what? Look at this move. He leaves a guy in the wake. On defense, Madden went with the man who plays with a smile, Kyle Lee at the corner. At safety, one of the NFL's strongest, Joey Browner, a guy who can bring you down with just one arm. Finally, there was Keith Millard. Tackle one arm. This guy stays ready. This is Wednesday before the game. But he brings that same look to the game. Here he is now. Now watch him. He has strength, he has speed, he has quickness, and he has great moves. Watch it here. Right by the guy sideways on the quarterback. He said, oh, let's see him do it again. One arm. Okay, here it is. Being chosen on the all-man team, I want to show you the perfect baby for the all-man team. Look at this kid. He's got two teeth. He's got the drool on the face. Can't sit, sit still for a second. He's hyper as his daddy is. But he's a lot better looking. 
<laughs> Upset day in college basketball. Maybe a few teams were inspired by the Gophers' performance yesterday. Actually, Pitt doesn't need any advice on upsets. Last week, the Panthers knocked off number two Syracuse. Today, they down number three Oklahoma, 99-91. Rod Brookins with the dunk, Pitt with the big win. Last week, Iowa edged North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Today, the Tar Heels fell at Virginia. Some argue the three-point line is too short. Richard Morgan's shot would have been good in any league. Morgan lit North Carolina with eight three-pointers. Virginia beats the Tar Heels 106 to 93. There are the finals we mentioned. Oklahoma falls to Pittsburgh. Virginia big over North Carolina. Louisville down Georgia Tech by a point, and it was Florida State 101-90 over Tennessee. Last night, Georgetown coach John Thompson walked off the court before his team beat Boston College. Thompson was protesting Proposition 42, which puts stricter guidelines on freshman scholarships. Like Thompson, Gopher coach Clem Haskins is concerned and hinted that the protesting is just starting. I think any time you deprive a young man opportunity to go to college and work towards a degree or opportunity just to go to college and that's not right and I don't think it's uh, fair and I don't think that I think you'll see many coaches around the country will start doing some things that we feel and united that can help a lot of young kids deserve a chance to go to college. Main event of the NBA today took place in Chicago where the Bulls faced the Celtics. Chicago earned its fifth straight win behind the lead of Michael Jordan. Jordan with a nice move here and a great feed then. He followed it up with a slam. Another great day for Michael J. He scored 42 points, 11 assists, and 9 steals. The Bulls 110-104 over, over Boston. We're going to let Michael put it in. You bet we are. The annual Sportsman Show is concluding, wrapping up at this hour. Uh, the show is, uh, of course, the cure for spring fever this time of year. And there are a number of interesting exhibits and some creative innovation, like the handy briefcase that turns into a picnic table. It, everyone seems to like it, you know, whether it's the outdoor person or the, lady, the household lady thinking of it for in the house, you know, as a game table or, you know, extra seating for extra company or place for the kids to eat. Well, there's a little something for every outdoorsman. The wildlife art, always an attractive exhibit. But for most Minnesotans, it's time here for a chance to talk about their favorite sport. Well, it's a great variety, all the booths and uh, all of the resorts and fishing tackle and everything. It really kind of gets you into the fever of fishing. David Winfield of the Yankees was among the guests at today's Breakfast of Champions with Mark Rosen and Sid Hartman. We talked with Winfield about his ongoing battle with the Yankees owner, George Steinbrenner. When you stand for something and you believe in something, you stick to your uh, guns, so to speak. And basically, um, I can't tell you how this ever happened. Being, uh, I I'm a good company man. I give them more than they ask for, but I never would have imagined this. To imagine Winfield playing in the Dome only in a Twins uniform. St. Paul native didn't list the Twins as a team he wanted to be traded to, but he's just playing a different kind of game. He said today he'd come here. If, yep. if Eloise Polat took out her checkbook, she could have signed him today. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't come here if yeah. Eloise would take out her checkbook? <laughs> I guess so. With that, we're going to say goodnight. See you at 10. <laughs> Come experience a place that is like no other. Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay. Feel your heart beat. Beat, 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 beat. Beat strong, 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 strong. Your heart beat strong. Feel the rhythm. Beat, beat, feel the light. Beat, beat, beat. Feel the freedom. Beat inside you forever. Beat, beat, beat. Beat inside you forever. Bush Gardens at Tampa Bay. No place ever. With People returns to the Twin Cities on January 17th. Tickets on sale now at Northrop Auditorium and Dayton's. Sponsored by Channel 4 and Signal Bank.
celebrate the best of times with ice capades.